Hi there! Welcome to DIY Comics FAQ. I'm GE Gallus and I'm here to answer all your questions about indie comics, graphic novels, zines, web comics, self-publishing, storytelling, you name it. If you like my videos, please subscribe. I, I received a few questions from at Pink Haired Bada on Twitter. Um, I'm going to answer one of their questions in this video and I'll answer the rest of their questions in the next video. So the question for today is, how about explaining your creative motivation? This is a really interesting question. Um, this is going to be about myself, so hopefully you guys won't um, mind if I talk a little bit more about myself. Um, everyone has a different reason for their creative motivation. So I think I mentioned this before, I've just been drawing and telling stories and writing for as long as I can remember. Um, I remember in probably elementary school um, I would sit at my desk and make up different characters and try to make stories for those characters. Um, and I remember, I think one of the first characters that I made in middle school was called Sushi Cat, um, and it was a black cat that wore Hawaiian shirts and loved eating sushi. Um, and of course I also did some fan art. Um, I'm not too big on drawing fan art nowadays, or it was never really my thing to draw fan art. I much prefer making original characters, not that there's anything wrong with drawing fan art, but I definitely remember in middle school I tried to draw like Sailor Moon and Inuyasha and things like that. Um, and even like I was super obsessed with the German movie Run Lola Run in middle school. Um, I just loved her blood red hair and like the techno music soundtrack. I still have that soundtrack and I listen to it now and again. Um, so I would draw fan art of Run Lola Run, which is probably a really strange thing for a middle school student to be drawing. Um, so that's kind of the beginning of things where I started. Uh, over time, over the years, my creative motivation probably has changed, um, but for storytelling there are always two things, no matter if you're doing comics or a movie or whatever creative story that you're trying to tell, there are two things you're either trying to entertain your audience or you're trying to make your audience think or both. Um, I think I probably mostly fall under the category of both. I want my audience to think and I want to maybe teach my audience some new things that they didn't know before, but I also don't want to be preachy. I want them to enjoy learning, um, so that's a big motivation for me especially with something like The Poet and the Flea where I'm trying to make William Blake more accessible because I think a lot of people misunderstand William Blake or they don't, it's too complicated for them so they just, you know, leave it alone. They don't try to explore William Blake's works. Um, so that's kind of where one of my motivations for making The Poet and the Flea, for instance, is to try to make something difficult, easier for more people to understand. Um, I think graphic novels and comics are a great medium to try to teach people new things because usually graphic novels are a pretty fast read. Um, not to say that that's a bad thing and it's not less than a piece of literature or novel. Um, I just think that a something that combines words and images is easier for a lot of people to consume. Um, so if you can figure out an easy, fun, and interesting way to teach your audience something new through a comic book, I think that that's the ideal. <laughs> so demystifying William Blake for The Poet and the Flea is a similar motivation to my other graphic novel, um, The Plague and Dr. Came. Um, I'm not really demystifying plague doctors per se, but um, in a lot of comics and video games and other things, 
plague doctors kind of have taken on this supernatural quality to them so and there's nothing wrong with that but my goal for the plague and doctor came was to kind of strip the plague doctor back to its historical origins um to explore the true um remedies that they use during the day like bloodletting and leeches and to get back to like the historical facts of a plague doctor. I'm going to take this opportunity while talking about creative motivation to go back to some of my early inspirations. Um, I read a lot and watched a lot of TV and movies as a kid as well as even you know even today I whenever I read something or I watch something I'm always looking for inspiration no matter what it is um, I try to look for inspiration everywhere um, and I try to take what other creative people are doing and try to take the parts that inspire me and use it in my own work um, so I thought I would just talk about three different um, comic book artist or comic book series that really inspired me as a kid and kind of pushed me in the direction of making my own comics. So first I'm going to talk about Edward Gorey. Um, Edward Gorey was a huge influence on me as a kid. I would try to draw like Edward Gorey, try to do a lot of cross hatching and things like that. Um, I collected all of his books as a kid and I still have them now and I love looking at them. Um, I think that Edward Gorey has gotten more popular in recent years. Um, he died I think back in 2001. Um, so I was like really into him when he died, unfortunately, um, but I still love his work. It, you know, a lot of people probably don't necessarily consider his work as comic books, but I mean, I, I really think that they do have a comic book feel to them. Um, they're kind of taking, I guess, a children's book format and making them more sophisticated, more adult. Um, they're of course very dark, macabre humor um, and very strange but very detailed drawings. Um, it's clear to me that, and I'm sure clear to a lot of people, that Edward Gorey has probably influenced people like Tim Burton's work. I do get a lot of people saying, oh your stuff looks a lot like Tim Burton's work, especially The Poet and the Flea, but actually it and I, I, I like Tim Burton too, I like a lot of Tim Burton's movies, but the influence on my work probably goes back to Edward Gorey's work. I think a biography of Edward Gorey came out not too long ago. Um, I really have to get my hands on a copy of that and read it. It seems like a lot of people are enjoying that biography. Um, and if you are unfamiliar with Edward Gorey's work, I really encourage you to check it out. It's really unique and um, just totally inspiring. So Edward Gorey was my American influence as a child. Um, so I'm going to talk now about The Adventures of Tintin by Hergé, um, which was I suppose my Belgian influence as a child. Um, disclaimer, I know that there are a lot of problematic and or racist imagery in Tintin. I care a lot about diversity and you know fair portrayals of people, non-stereotyped portrayals of people, um, but this was made in a different time period um, so I think it's still worth being inspired by this but also acknowledging that there are problematic things in Tintin. But don't let those problematic things discourage you from looking into Tintin. Um, even though I guess Tintin is considered a children's comic book, it's really not. Um, I think that there are a lot of plot points in Tintin about opium smuggling and like there are even some like Ku Klux Klan type people in one of them so you know it's really not for kids even though everyone thinks it's for kids um, but I just love the colors in Tintin I believe he did all of this in gouache maybe in watercolor um, and I just the movement of the characters the characters are so dynamic 
in their movement so that was always very inspiring to me um i have the whole tintin collection in my personal library and i like to go back and reread these every once in a while um so yeah this is a really interesting series if you've never read tintin i highly encourage you to go back and read some of these um maybe you've seen the movie i think they're making another movie maybe um maybe you've seen the movie and not the comics so definitely go back and check out the comics so of course i am highly inspired by manga in different ways um i like a lot of different manga series um i kind of have taken breaks over the years from manga and then gone back to it um so one of the series that really inspired me as a middle schooler was Paradise Kiss, um, anything by Ayazawa. Um, she's also known for doing Nana um, and some other series. But what I really love about Paradise Kiss and Ayazawa's art style is that it's really unique. There aren't really any other manga artists that draw like this. Um, so it's just, I always, was inspired by the unique style of her illustrations and the way that she blocked her pages, the panels on each page. Um, so I know that this is a Japanese version, um, but I'm, I know that they've translated this. I'm sure you can get your hands on a translated version of this if you'd like. Um, so this is very different from your typical manga, I would say but it was really popular in Japan when it first came out. I think that she would still be popular now, but I think that she got sick a number of years ago and stopped making Nana. Um, so uh, she's kind of faded out of popularity because of that. Um, but even so, like it's definitely worth checking out her work and experiencing it for yourself. So those are three artists, comic book artists, that have inspired me over the years and have remained part of my creative motivation. Um, I want to try to make my own style like they had their own style. Um, when you see each of those three artists work, you immediately know who drew it. Um, so that's kind of, I guess, why it was always my goal to make a unique art style for my comics. I think another important part of my creative motivation is to try to elevate comics and graphic novels into a respected art form. Um, unfortunately, I think that in the US a lot of people still think of comic books as purely for kids and that they can't explore a sophisticated story. Um, anyone familiar who reads graphic novels and comic books on a regular basis knows that that's not true. Um, there's also kind of a misconception that graphic novels can only be memoirs, um, and that's of course not true. Graphic novels are a medium, not a genre, so graphic novels can be any genre that they choose to be, um, and they can be historical fiction, which is what I've been working on. I think a lot of people don't understand that a graphic novel or a comic book can be historical fiction or that it can be biographical or that it can be a serious drama you know people tend to think of comics as only comedic and only for entertainment not to be something that makes you think um so i really one of my motivations in going in making my own comic books and graphic novels is to get people to understand that comic books can be whatever genre you want them to be and that they can tell important dramatic stories and that they're not just a throwaway, you know, like you're going to put it in the trash afterwards and forget about it, that comics will leave an impression on you and you'll think about them many years after reading them, just like you would with a piece of literature. Not to say that there's anything wrong with superhero comics or memoirs, it's just that comics can be whatever genre you want, and I wish that a lot more people realized that. Another part of my creative motivation is that 
comic books, making my own graphic novels and comics allows me to do all of the steps. I don't have to rely on a team necessarily to put it all together. Um, I've tried in the past doing different creative endeavors, like I've written screenplays and tried to film short films, but they always end up falling apart because I need more than just myself to make it. Um, so I kind of drifted back into making comic books because it's something that I can write, draw, and self-publish all by myself. So I'm just talking from my personal experience. Everyone's going to have a different reason to make their own comics and graphic novels. Um, you have to find your own creative motivation and develop your own motivation for yourself. Um, there's no wrong or right answer. Um, that's kind of what I keep repeating in all these videos. Um, I'm just trying to give you advice from my own experiences and then you can take away what's helpful for you. Um, everything that I say there's, you know, I'm not saying that it's gonna apply to every single one of you. Um, and if there's something that I say that you disagree with, um, I encourage you to form your own opinions. Um, I just hope that what I say in these videos will help guide you to make your own wonderful, amazing, innovative comics and graphic novels. So in our next episode, I'm going to be answering the second part of Pink Haired Bada's question. I've received a number of other questions from various Twitter accounts, um, so I'll be working through all those questions in future episodes. Um, but I'm happy to answer your questions. If you want to send me a question that you want answered in a future video, please reply with that question or tweet me at GE Gallus, which is G-E-G-A-L-L-A-S. Want to support this channel? Please subscribe. It's free and it's just one easy click and you'll get notifications whenever I post a new episode. So I really appreciate it if you would take a second to subscribe. That's all for now. See you next time.